Hey guys and girls, welcome to this week's Tuesday Night Live. And uh, I'll just give everyone a couple of moments to hop online and uh, hope everyone is having an awesome week and uh, kicking ass with the goals and doing whatever it is that makes you happy. Yeah, got something really exciting to talk about today. Um, something a little bit different and uh, hopefully we can make it interactive. And uh, I'm really intrigued of how long this live will go for. I'll try and keep it concise uh, for one hour. Uh, that's what I always get told we need to do, is to keep it to one hour. So don't keep everyone, you know, online for too long. But um, I've got here, what do I have? I've got 22 news articles here. 22 news articles. These news articles range between 2008, 2009, 2011, 2012, 2014, 2014, 2015, 16, 18, 19, 20, and till today. So, um, yeah, a lot of these things here. I sent over to my team the other day, uh, just bang, 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 bang. And I haven't looked through them before tonight. I've just pulled out some random articles to have a bit of fun. So I can see there is a few people online. Uh, if you're liking the video, smash up the likes. I think that there might be a bit of a, uh, maybe the words that we've put in tonight's um, Facebook sort of description box over there might be keeping us with a lack of viewers tonight because uh, you know sometimes the algorithms get triggered. And uh, yeah, so let's just get straight into it and uh, hopefully everyone can check it out, whether it's now or check it out later. So today, my first question I have to ask is, we're in a boom right now, right? So since 2020, we've seen a property boom, property prices have gone crazy. Um, when was the last, when was the first boom of this decade? When did people think the first boom from 20, uh, from the year 2000 was? Um, just go and check the comment box. So I'm here, for those of you that are watching on different platforms, this is aired across different uh, Facebook social media pages, whether it be Zinger Finance or uh, my Nathan Birch pages or Property Investment Agents. Um, but I'm reading this from uh, the Be Invested page. So um, yeah, if you guys are watching and you can see, I'm finding there's like a lack of um, comments coming through in the comment section. So uh, flick us a comment. Um, but when do you think the first boom of this millennium or this century occurred? I can't see any comments, guys. So I'll just go straight on to it anyway. I was trying to make it interactive. Um, so back in 2001, like 99, 2000, we saw a boom occur. Uh, that boom, if we look at Sydney, and the same sort of uh, trend followed across Sydney and, say, Melbourne, so the country's two biggest cities saw this same boom. But um, the boom occurred uh, up until about 2003. 2003 hit, then we went into a crash. Uh, property prices went backwards from about 2003 to about 2008. The GFC came in about 2007. Interest rates had gone up from 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, property prices went down. Um, that, that was only in Sydney and Melbourne areas like Perth and areas like Brisbane had actually taken off and a lot of regional areas took off at that period of time. So not one market is just, not every market is uh, in, in lockstep. Um, markets are, you know, there's many different markets out there. So you need to look at that. So that, you know, the property markets in 2003 to 2008 in Sydney and Melbourne fell, but in Brisbane and Perth took off. And, uh, that just shows that there's two different markets, but interest rates between 2003 and 2007 took off and um, hit a peak of about 725 basis points at the RBA in 2007, and then they started to, to fall. But um, once we saw the GFC come, we saw interest rates fall. And then once we saw the interest rates fall, then we saw the boom that we had from about 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And the market hit a peak in about 2016, uh, went sideways till about 2019, interest rates fell, things changed.
news articles from all of these years and read out the headlines, read out the predictions and look at really what happened in the news. Uh, it was a bit hard for me to find some of these articles going back 2004 and 2003 and 2005 because a lot of uh, news wasn't digital back in the day. But I do have some here and I thought I'd share that with you. So this um, article here, I don't actually know which website it's from because it's been cut off, otherwise I'd have too many pages here. But uh, this one is from January 25, 2008. And it says, house prices boomed in 2007, right? And come and think about that. 2007, wasn't that when the GFC arrived, right? Um, the booming house prices enjoyed by homeowners in 2007 are unlikely to be matched in 2008, predicts property research house Australian property monitors. Raising interest rates and a slowing economy would translate to lower price growth, especially in the markets that experience huge growth, including Melbourne, Brisbane and Adelaide. Melbourne house prices grew more than 25% in 2007, with the median house price rising to 463000 for the December quarter. If the growth in Melbourne continues at the same pace, that would surpass Sydney as the most expensive article there right but what i take from this article is imagine being one of those poor bastards that bought a property in 2007 you would have gone bankrupt wouldn't you you would have been through the gfc you would have seen rising interest rates you would have seen instability in the market that's what it's all saying here um raising interest rates and slowing economy translate to lower price growth well when did the property market take off we saw the largest property boom ever from 2008 to about 2016 so that was eight years after this but you know the news has it right and we should all go on blind faith go and trust the media how you know, how how great is it anyway i think you'll start seeing a bit of a, a picture here when we go through all the media now this one here is from our friends over at the always be communist uh network the communist network here being abc australian uh you know, I don't know what B stands for, but anyway, and Australia's broadcasting communism. Soaring rates stunt property boom. It's interesting, right? Really, really interesting. I don't have a chart for this to overlap, but it's it's very interesting. I, I'm going to send you with some homework uh, to do after this. Fresh evidence has emerged that rising interest rates really have put an end to the property boom. Amid all the talk of a rental crisis, the pace of growth in credit for investor housing has sunk to a record low, with separate figures showing a 6% drop in sales of new houses and units. But the downturn here pales comparison to the United States. According to the highly regarded index, American house prices are at the worst slump ever with no sign at the bottom in sight. Prices have fallen rent soaring and the tightest rental market in years, you might think that people would be pouring into investment property, but you would be wrong. Investor housing is by far the worst hit. The Reserve Bank has been keeping separate figures on that sector for 17 years and is growing at the slowest pace ever seen. Does that not sound like an article for 2022? Anyway, there is only one explanation, says the Australian property monitors, Michael McNamara. The cheap credit has dried up. The cheap credit. The interest rates were fucking 7.25% at the RBA and they fell to 3% over five months after this article. <laughs> I'm not angry when I read this, right? I just do it because I find it funny, right? I find it funny looking at data because I've got a good memory and I remember this shit because that's this time when this article was wrote out. Six months later, I quit my job in the middle of the GS GFC. It was great. Why did I quit my job? Because the interest rates fell, the rents went up, and no one even realised what was going on. But people's pants were being pulled down, and they didn't even realise. They were watching the news. Ah, oh, the news is, you know, telling me that the property market's going to fall and collapse. The same shit that happens now. Anyway, property market is being hit by a double whammy. Sounds interesting. Um... Sounds like the media giving everyone a double whammy in the central banks. Uh, firstly, we're seeing rapidly rising mortgage rates. That means that the cost of debt is a deterrent for investors to come in the market. 
On the other hand, we're seeing a retraction of debt, and that means that lenders neither have the capacity nor the appetite to lend us money. But it is a sharp contrast to the height of the boom in late 2002 and early 2003. Back then, finance to lend was growing at 25% a year. Now the pace of growth has slowed down to 9.5%. And there's own research that shows that house prices were flat overall in the first three months of this year and are headed for a fall. It came as a surprise to us just how abrupt the change in sentiment has been. I mean, after all, Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane all experienced 20% plus rates of change in their values in the last 12 months. To see the situation in the property market change so abruptly in the March quarter, where we saw the declines and little or no growth across all major capital cities was quite remarkable. New figures today, blah, blah, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. But I just want to go and just re-highlight. This article is from the ABC, the Aussie Broadcasting of Communism, uh, in 30th of April 2008. Um, this here sounds very similar to the articles that you're reading on the news websites today. Imagine being one of those poor bastards that bought just before interest rates came down. Right? Soaring rates, I went up to the guy, right? and they came down by 66% in a period of five months, right? They came down from 7.25 down to 3% because the market couldn't afford it because the liquidity was drying out. But we go and look at these articles and people that were watching this, imagine how many people were like, oh no, I'm gonna, you know, everything's gonna crash in price. <laughs> everything's gonna crash in price. And, uh, you know, here we are, you know, looking at, um, what was one of the biggest booms in history. I'm just going to go and have a quick look at your comments here because I see that there's dropping in and out. Um, yeah, I um, for some reason, um, hopefully that we don't have too much dropping out. Apparently the internet is dropping out today, guys. I don't know what's going on. I hope it's all okay. But I'm going to keep going on anyway. So here's the third one. Let's look at our third article here. Once again, we've got the Australian Broadcasting Communism Network of News, ABC. Economist puts dint in optimism. A bigger crash is coming. <gasps> A bigger crash is coming? When was this from? 2009? Oh, shit. Better sell everything. Better not buy anything. Oh, that's right. 2009, when was that? Oh, I'm getting old now. Oh, that was when I was 24 and I quit my job in 2009. That makes a lot of sense. An international economic forecaster says a bigger crash lies ahead for global share and property markets within the next... Um, Harry Dent... <laughs> Who remembers Harry Dent? Is he still around predicting fear? Predicted the Japanese recession of the 1990s and the forecast of the global financial crisis. He has told ABC News Breakfast that the Australian share market will continue to make gains during the next few months before bottoming in 2011. I'd say maybe all the Australian all ordinaries will get up to 4,500. The Dow may be close to 10,000. Wow. Imagine buying in the Dow Jones in 2009 at 10,000 points. And then it gets, what, crashed down to, what, 8,000 points? And then it goes all the way up to 20,000. And then it gets crashed down to 17,000. And then it goes all the way up to 35, 40,000. And then it goes down to 30,000. These markets, all these commentators out there, all the commie news out there make all these predictions. But what happens is the central banks just come along. They keep saving the day and they keep printing money. Apparently, the driving force behind this and baby boomers, boomers are going to peak in spending, prepare for retirement, kids are going to leave the nest, and the economy is going to slow just like Japan did. Well, what Harry Dent didn't forecast back in 2009 in his equation is the
is a normal thing, change lending policies out there and give everyone free money. And what no one ever saw was a universal basic income where they give you free money for doing nothing, right? Get to stay at home, lock yourself in the house, put a mask on, go and inoculate yourself and you get to get some free money. Maybe even get a bit of free food. Here we go. This article, this one here is from, I think it's from The Guardian, and it says, this article is more than 13 years old. It's got a little disclaimer on it. This article is from 6th of January, 2009. So one year on. Um, House prices fell by 15.9% in 2008, Nationwide said today, the biggest annual drop in since society began publishing its index in 1991. December, so the largest boom and bust that we've ever seen since when they started writing these things. Does that not sound like similar sort of news and propagandas out there? This one here is from the UK. It is the Guardian it's from. Um, and it goes on to read that the Nationwide House, these are the same news articles that are happening all around the world, right? It's not just Australia. We haven't just seen Australian house prices increase. We haven't seen US, we've seen Kenya, we've seen the Philippines, we've seen everything. Um, everyone's falling. Um, what have we got here? Got some question. Uh, <laughs> what have we got here? I'm seeing a lot of people say that the reception and the internet is really bad today. So I could try and I'll actually leave a little message here just for my uh, marketing communications team. If they think that I should change over to sell sort of reception today, um, then I'll change to my cell phone. So if you can see that, I will change to if you suggest that I do so. Um, here's number five. Maybe it's uh, the new um, the new sun flare that's coming out to wreck our, uh, our communications, which they talked about on the news. I just posted the article into Birchfeed, which was very interesting, that they said that there's going to be a solar sun flare, which is going to wipe out GPS and radio communication. So that's maybe what we're experiencing here. Uh, this one here is an article from the Sydney Morning Herald, and it goes, Home prices in the biggest drop in 12 years. This article is from April 29th, 2011, uh, from the Sydney Morning Herald. Capital City house prices continued their downward slide in March, posting the worst slump in at least 12 years as the property market showed more sign of sagging demand. Brisbane and Perth's fell the most. Nationwide city home value slipped 2.2% adjusted in March following a downward revised 0.5% fall in February, according to the property research group RP Data. The decline brought in the national city medium dwelling price to 455,000 in March. The March quarter alone, national city homes sank to 2.1%. Basically, there are more people putting their properties on the market than there are people buying them. Uh, RP Data Research Director Tim Lawless told Business Day, until we start to see the effective supply being absorbed, I don't really think we'll see any upward pressure. In 2011, even as the stock of houses on the market increases, would-be buyers would have put off by poor affordability, higher interest rates, and concerns about taking on new debt with uncertainty about the global economy lingering. Auction clearance rates, a barometer of market activity, have hovered around 60% in Sydney and Melbourne in recent months, well down from the 80% level seen last year. So let's just go back and have a look at this article. I've just shown you articles from 2008, 2007, 2009. I'm now showing you articles from 2011 from the Sydney Morning Herald. Apparently the property market's been dropping for the last decade, two decades, right? last 13 years. 13 years ago they were falling. Here we go, here's another one. This one here is from some other commie news network. Um, record slump in house prices in 2011. Australian house prices plunged by the most on record in 2011 as global economic uncertainty and concerns about its impact at home kept the lid on the demand. An index measuring the weighted average of prices for the ABS, the biggest calendar the year dropped since the data began in 2002, they fell 1% in the three months to December from the previous quarter when they retreated at a revised 1.9%. So here we are. More articles, more articles coming out talking about the record slump in house prices in 2011. Um, and then we've got here, who is it? Um, 
National Australia Bank, uh, HIA Chief Economist, um, and then let's have a look at you. Survey of the home prices expected December 13, according to report released today from the NAB. NAB believes expectations may be a bit too pessimistic. Alan Oster, Chief Economist at the bank, wrote in the report, a structural shortage of housing remains. Comments are still weak, interest rates are falling, and the unemployment rate is still comparatively low. So here we are with more articles coming out, whether it's 2011, 2008, 2007. We've got here uh, 2014. Right, uh, housing bubble fears property prices could fall ten to twenty percent. So this article here is from some fucking smart person from what bullshit um, publication are you from? I don't even know. Christopher Joy is the person's name. Housing bubble fears the property prices could fall ten to twenty percent. The $4 trillion Australian housing market is overvalued by at least 10%. Everyday valuations get more stretched. Indeed, Australia is jumps months away from having the most expensive residential property market in history. Anyone with exposure to the banks, which account for one third of the share market's value, or to housing should be focused on two questions. Actually, that's a very important point that they make there. Anyone with exposure to the banks, which account for one third of the share market's value. So if the banks implode, there goes one third of the stock market, which would then roll into every other market being retail, supply chain, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, when will a bona fide bubble emerge and how steep are the price falls likely to be when borrowing costs are normalized? They're talking about normalizing borrowing costs when interest rates were 5%. <laughs> The door to never seen before 4.8% mortgage rates would be fuel for double digit house price inflation that risk blowing the destabilizing bubble. At the time, we argued the housing market was already priced for, per uh, priced for perfection. Home values could not afford to outstrip incomes for any sustained period. Why can't they? Because they make the interest rates so cheap and it becomes cheaper and cheaper to hold on to that money. Um, anyway, I, I, this stuff just really fucking irks me, right? And make people go to this and go, oh, yeah, I must bow down to the media and I must, you know, put my hands together and pray because this is the holy grail of what's happening out there in the economy because Christopher Joy or whatever your name is uh, and any of these commie outlets that have been writing do they what how much are they earning a year what do they own in their property portfolio what's their net worth looking like they're just pulling shit out from stats and figures and that sounds great right and whatever they're being told from their higher masters say hey put this out there this is what needs to go in etc but anyway it's very interesting that all these articles that we've been reading have been saying the house prices let's read from the start right let's just have a bit of a recap as we're 20 minutes into the day house prices boomed in 2007 they're going to fall. Soaring rates stunt property growth. Right? Imagine being a poor bastard that bought back in 2007 and what your house would be worth today. You still wouldn't have recovered when you bought your house in Sydney for 200 grand. It's now worth a million bucks. Anyway, this other commie thing here. Um, Economist puts a dent in optimism. Bigger crash is coming in 2009. We've got here another one. We've got another one here. Home prices in biggest drop in 12 years. Then we have another one, record slump in house prices in 2011. Uh, and then we've got another one, uh, housing bubble fears, prices could fall 10 to 20% in 2014. So let's just assume that, right? <laughs> Almost a decade has gone and the property market doubled in that period of time and it's doubled again and doubled again, right? So all the poor bastards that were watching there were like, oh, I'm going to wait until the house prices crash and I'm going to sit here and, you know, it's like all the people that waited for the property price to crash in 2020. Right? We'll get into that a little bit later because that's even a fun story to talk about there. Let's go on to this one. Um, from Your Investment Property Magazine. I remember I was on the cover of Your, Your Investment Property Magazine many years ago before I was less crazy, before I 
grew the gray hair and I didn't talk so whacked up stuff, but it's interesting when you are in the media so much and you see these glitches that are out there in the matrix and you see that there's agendas anyway. Um, this one here is Australia's property crash. Are we all doomed, right? Are we all doomed? We've been told for years by the likes of US analysts like Harry Dent and Australia's homegrown pessimist, Stephen Keane, that our property market is in a bubble and about to burst. It hasn't happened. I remember in 2008 or something, right? This guy, Stephen Keane. A lot of you may remember him. A lot of you may have been hearing about him for the first time today. Stephen Keane said he's going to sell his house and he's going to walk all the way across the country um, if the property prices don't crash by 40%. Well, I, I hope this guy's bought another property since, but he missed out on the biggest boom in history. It's the funniest thing ever. But uh, we look at the facts. We look at what's going on here. Um, there's a strict rule on foreign ownership. The biggest real estate investors are not from China. The proportion of real estate investments by foreign goes on about foreign. Who made this about anything about people coming from China? Um, Australia has a property bubble. Let's clarify it all. What constitutes the housing bubble? These are all things that were talked about going back 10 years ago. Anyway, better watch out, guys. Um, I hate to tell you, this is what's going to happen. The Australian housing market is facing a bloodbath collapse. The economists have spoken. Um, I hate to regret to inform you that, yes, um, as per this communist uh, news network here, the housing market is about to face a bloodbath collapse. Uh, when was this written? Oh, that's right. 2015. Uh, Australian real estate market is in the grip of the biggest housing bubble of the nation's history, and Melbourne will be the epicentre of historic bloodbath when it bursts, according to two housing economists. Lindsay David and Philip Seuss, Seuss, Seuss um, who have written books on the overheated housing market, wonder how those books have aged well, hey, have berated the housing industry and politicians who refuse to acknowledge the existence of a bubble due to perceived shortage of housing in major capital cities. Well, look, if you want to have someone that agrees with you that we are in a bubble, you've got him. He's here reading Facebook Lives. We're in a bubble, right? We always have been in a bubble, and it's not a housing bubble. It is in a currency bubble. It's a manipulation of the currency that you're using, just like that game that my team bought me for my birthday, the Monopoly board, right? The whole game is fake. The money doesn't exist. When it's finished, it all goes back in the boxes. The crowd of the game comes and collects. That's the system that we're in. But I don't even want to read all this, right? Like, um, like you can see the article. You can see the heading. You can see the date, 2015. Um, goes on and read, like, the sharpest decline occurred in Sydney since 2008. The market fell 4.5% this year. Uh, Dr. Wilson uh, said, you've got to put the doctor in front, and you know they're smart. Um, the supply picture was a mixed picture, and oversupply in the Melbourne has tempered with dire shortages of inner city rings. Um he said the prospect of the bloodbath like the one described by LF Economics was absolutely remote. Jamie Dixon, an economist of University of Victoria, said last week that prices in inner Melbourne were only going up and up. It's funny how these articles age well. So you can do what the media tells you to do. Um, you can do whatever your friend or your family or your best mates or whatever tell you to do. Or well, you can do just what you think is best, right? Because you've calculated, you've got a strategy, you've got a plan, and you're out there to go and attack and, and make shit happen. But um, these people, like if you took any of this advice, you wouldn't have seen any growth in the last 20 years, right? We're going to keep reading some more of these. Oh, yes, uh, we've got our friends over at news.com. I like the guys at news.com. Um, I was on the phone to one of my friends over there yesterday doing an article, right? So we'll see that article come out this weekend. But in the meanwhile, you know, they're not all the same over there, right? And uh, this one here is an article from, uh, when was it? 2016 with Frank. And it goes on to read, uh, Aussie homes 40% overvalued, leaving young home buyers paying, praying for a property crash. Let's go and read this one. Australia's housing market is 40% overvalued, with one expert warning an entire generation is now 
praying for a crash. Well, let's see who's praying for a crash still. Australia's housing market, blah, blah, blah. It's latest round of global housing economists, The Economist magazine. Right? If you know who The Economist is and know what they stand for, right, you know that there's something really messed up there. Anyway, I found that house prices have risen in, risen in 20 out of 26 countries it tracks. Well, let me say, right, that's an interesting comment just there, right? You can read it here. The Economist found have prices have risen 20 out of 26 countries well isn't that funny right why did all of these house prices rise in 20 out of 26 countries why do they have all the same news going on why do they have all the things is it because sydney's the best place or queensland's the best place or melbourne's the best place is it because we've got the newest train line in the hills district here it means absolutely diddly fucking squat because it just comes down to yeah, right. manipulation of currency, manipulation of liquidity out there in the system. I'm trying to find this, whoever the bright spark that wrote this article, who was the alleged economist in here. Um, I just can't be bothered right reading all this for you guys. I just can't be bothered. I just find it fun that every year, right, these big articles that are coming out. And the house market's going to blow up every five minutes, right? Sometimes multiple times in the year. Daily Telegraph. Experts warn of a debt bomb as housing downturn worsens. So I apologise back in 2018 that I wasn't the smart one that came out and told everyone we're in a big Ponzi scheme and we're going to see a global financial depression. Oh, wait, I did. And some viewers thought that I was off my head on drugs. Some people thought that, you know, why would you say that for Nathan? Like you have a benefit of benefiting from the property market, right? Some, uh, you know, publications went out to even write an article saying that it was going bankrupt, right? But that's pretty funny too. Right? Uh, anyway, it's what happens when you don't read what they want you to write and put into the media. But Experts have issued a grim warning for homeowners claiming up to two-fifths of your home worth could be wiped out in 2019. So two-fifths, that would mean... Four Spoke to data scientist, wait for it, Martin North from Digital Finance Analytical, who said... Australia was uniquely vulnerable when it came to an economic crash tied to a property downturn. At the worst end of the spectrum, um, if everything turns against us, we could see property prices down 40 to 45% down from their peaks, which is a huge deal. Wonder if he's bought any properties lately, actually, because if he had of since 2018, which was five, six years ago, uh, or four years, only four years ago, he would have seen the largest property boom in his life. And that's a pretty big life I think he's had. Anyway, um, there's $1.7 trillion held by the banks in mortgages for owner occupiers and investors. That's about 65% of their total lending. That's higher than any other country in the Western world by a long way. There's probably no country in the world more susceptible to ramifications of a housing crash than Australia. We are uniquely exposed at the moment. Mr. North said that Australia was now the same position the US was back in 2006, a position which triggered an economic collapse. As a society and as a government and as a regulatory system, we are all banking on the home price engine that just goes on giving and giving and giving. It's not going, he said. Oh, wow. We should trust these professors now, shouldn't we? Because they know everything about the economy because they've got a little degree. Anyway, and that's not a piss take at anyone with a degree. It's just an interesting observation that all these smart asses that are writing all these articles have done nothing with their lives. Anyway, not into name calling or anything like that, but, you know, their fear is really, you know, I don't actually disagree with a lot of these people. I actually follow a lot of their works and I see what they have to say. And I agree with half the shit that's being said by them on a daily, like on their videos and stuff like that. However, they miss out on a lot because they're not looking at what uh, levers the system has, right? So we had lockdowns, we had universal basic income, I mean, job seeker, job keeper, stimulus packages, grants, um, boosters, free government loans, 0% interest rate policy, 
uh, money for whoever has a heart and a, you know, a pole still attached to their body. Um, you know, it's just very interesting, should we say. Um, I remember this article. Um, this one here is from September 2018. This was an article that came out and everyone was like, oh, Nathan, the property market is going to go. It's going to pop. Have you sold your properties yet? And I was like, I'm going to buy as much shit as I can get my hands on to. This article came out on 60 Minutes, right? I just remember seeing this. It's uh, That was a, a 60 Minutes article. This is on domain.com. And it was an article called Bricks and Slaughter. <laughs> um, expert dispute what report with claims of 40% house price falls in uh, 40%. Again, we've got our smart friend over there, Martin North, right? <laughs> Wonder if he's bought any properties yet. Anyway, that was 2019. Let's go back and read some more articles, hey? 2018, sorry. Here's another one from our friends over the, your, your investment property. I literally just pulled articles and had a look at the headings and I was I had a few keyword searches to find all these uh, links for tonight's Facebook Live. But this one here, your investment property, our property prices about to plunge by 40 to 45%. Anyway, got it in the more articles, house prices falling. Have you noticed that three of those articles were the same bloke that got put out through every other media outlet? It's pretty interesting to be questioning who would have put someone out like that. You know, would they have worked at the bank? Would they have had a tie to the bank? Would they have been put there as a puppet from a bank? Um, you know, some people that have never been seen in the media before and just pop out of nowhere and suddenly they're an expert, right? And they get all this airtime. It's interesting to see. So be very careful of seeing the articles, see the names of the people quoting things in the articles. What's their agenda? What's their game? Who placed them there? Who pays for them? Who pays them to go for the articles? Because if I wasn't, you know, getting leads from the media or anything like that, I wouldn't be doing media, right? So you've got to be questioning yourself, like who would be placing that person in the media to be uh, the little avatar for an agenda? What is the agenda? Okay, this one here, uh, Nine News, uh, where now in four years ago, um, when it comes to the property market, um, you know, got house prices falling again. Um, poor people that are buying at the peak of the market. Anyway, that's four years ago. We've got here another one. 2018. Uh, this one's from news.com. The hidden cost of the house price crash. Australia's biggest housing markets are falling quickly. While sellers might be panicking, the biggest cost will be felt by everyone. State governments love splashing the cash, especially at election time. New road, there's four billion to do. What about a long promised rail network between the airport and the city? Here's another few billion dollars. But well, the crash is running dry and it's all because we stopped buying houses. CoreLogic data shows, I actually like this article by the sounds of it because I can see exactly what's happening here, right? And I can see the date coincides with something else very important. Um, down 10% sales prices, um, stamp duty revenues that is required uh, in this article. Um, yeah, uh, here's, here's other things. Here's other links inside the article. So articles inside of an article. It's kind of like, what are those books that choose your own adventure books when you're in school? Go to page 12 and you'll see a different ending, right? So here we are. More links in the middle of this article. Passed in are the two most dangerous words in real estate. The worst suburb. Not like hottest prices. Not this, not that. So the brain stimulation from all the media right, is pushing in um, you know, negative connotations surrounding property. Just remember that was in 2018. Um, and let's go to 2019. There was a point where I said that we we're going through a massive depression, right? And it was 2018. And we only averted the depression because of one special thing that came our way, which apparently uh, came as a form of a stimulus package to a virus. But um, we, we'll get to that in a moment anyway. Uh, this one here, February 2019. Good old Frank from news.com. Melbourne house prices fall at the fastest quarterly pace on record as Sydney enters new territory. 
Experts have been left stunned after housing house prices plunged at the fastest rate of a decade decline ever seen, and there is more pain to come. Read it. Experts have been left stunned after house prices plunged at the And house prices should have crashed massively. But anyway, here's another article. Our friend Frank from news.com. Let the bloodbath begin. House prices in Sydney, Melbourne could, ha could halve in the worst crash since 1890s. House prices could half this time, he may say. House prices could fall by more than 40% in the worst crash since the 1890s depression. A new report warns here's we're now in stage two of the bloodbath. House prices could Melbourne and Sydney could fall up to 25% this year alone, and there's a chance that they could fall by half in the coming property bloodbath, an economist has warned. LF Economics founder Lindsay David, who has been warning of the looming property crash for the last five years, said in a report today. I wonder what this poor bastard's done with his life, right? It sounds like a miserable fuck to be having at a party, right? I'm talking about this economist that's predicting, not Frank, but this guy here that's writing about the, the property market crash. Imagine, oh, property price is going to crash, right? It'd be like just some pissed off guy that never made it, like the drunk down at the pub. Oh, you know, I wish I could have done that, you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, wow. Imagine that. Um... Uh, I think there's a chance price, property prices could fall over the long run. <laughs> His base case of 20% falls in the calendar year of 2019 is significantly more than bearish than other experts. AMP Capital is tipping a peak to trough falls of 25%, while UBS is tipping 25% with a risk of 30%. People used to ask me, Nathan, what drugs are you on? Because I want them, because I was talking to some really delusional shit, right? No one ever asked these guys what drugs they're on because they're like fucking way off the mark, right? Just for the record, I've never touched drugs. Imagine if I had drugs, it'd be funny as fuck. <laughs> they sound fun, but never tried them. Uh, anyway, the dead accelerate, all this shit in the media. And what happened in 2019? Nothing, right? House prices were a bit soft, prices may came down a couple of percent, whatever. But we had our friends in the central banks with other plans to save us because the economy was completely screwed and everyone was shit out of luck, but without stimulus packages. Um, lots of text messages coming through. Uh, this one here, some other commie place, oh, The Guardian. Uh, house prices falling at the fastest rate in a decade. I just read a decade's worth of news articles and they said that the house prices were falling for a decade. It means that the market didn't do anything since 2007 if I took all that news in and consumed it. But anyway, that's why I just stopped and I realised and I questioned that if I know there's so much bullshit out there and something I know about in the media, what about stuff I have no idea about, whether it be weather, whether it be you know uh, health or whether it be geopolitical or government or politics you start drawing the dots together you start seeing a totally different picture folks anyway house prices are falling at a fastest rate in a decade sydney melbourne properties are down 11 percent 7.2 percent compared with the 2017 peak um so they put in in 2016 right so there was a crash that occurred which was nothing really when you look back and you go fuck i wish i was caught up in that crash right well, it was a crash markets went back like 10 percent or so poor bastards didn't take up on those offers and they thought they're going to wait for the 40 percent and they were shit out of luck still with their old fella in their hand waiting to buy a property in 2022 um but reality it is is that between 2016 apra came in made it hard to get credit in 2019, the market was completely screwed. That took three years for them to realise that. They had to somehow uh, print more money and make it cheaper. That's when we started seeing. It was surprise, surprise, in June, 2000, June the 4th, 2014, everyone was saying, whatever, and interest rates came down. 
uh, by 25 basis points. I remember doing a Facebook Live very much like this. It was in Queensland. I was out on a balcony of whatever motel I was staying at, at the time, and the sun went down. I just kept talking. It was like a pot turn from a Facebook Live into a podcast, talking about stuff because you couldn't see me, right? And uh, it was one of my favourite uh, Facebook Lives ever because... Everyone was like, fuck, how did you pick that, right? It was because of the data, not by listening to any of these sort of clowns that are writing up crap about stuff they don't know what they're talking about. But anyway, um, we move on to 2020. <laughs> and this is where the world really, everyone was smoking the bong. Eh? Coronavirus pandemic could see house prices plummet by 20%. Economists wards. Who the fuck are these economists? Right? Seriously. You think that they're smart, right? They're the ones telling of all these crashes constantly anyway. Why don't I call myself an economist? <laughs> you don't want to be, you know, one of these pawns that are the economists, the alleged economists here. Clearance rates dropped to 61.3% across combined capital cities. It's still the biggest, busiest weekend in 2019. Um, what could trigger a major house price crash? Dr. Oliver said while the Reserve Bank last week moved to cut interest rates to a record low of 0.25%, they were expected to stay there for some time. A recession was now likely, and this would cause the current unemployment rate of 5.1% uh, to double. Uh, a sharp rise in unemployment. If you look at the announcement from the federal government made on Sunday, it implies that the Treasury thinks that unemployment will rise to 10%. Anyway, we know what happened in 2020. 2020. Um, they just printed lots of money. <laughs> they printed lots of money. Uh, number 20, news article number 20. RBA predicts a potential of 40%. This is the RBA this time, right? Now imagine going to a barbecue or an outing, a social gathering with one of these guys, right? That would be a very exciting uh, conversation to be had. I actually mean it, right? It'd be fun. I'd like to find one of them. I'd bring my big stick like a piñata and uh, type the piñata and see what we can get out of them. Anyway, new research shows what will happen if house prices fall. The news is bad. It turns out Australia is so puffed on housing wealth that if house prices fall, they drag down a huge section of our economy with them. That sounds fair. If the market turns to shit, means that not everyone would have access to using their equity in the house as an ATM to go buy himself in retail sectors and all, all those sorts of things. The Reserve Bank of Australia has now put on a new research on Tuesday with some dire warnings. RBA investigated the effect of a 40% house fall in prices. A fall they described as extreme but plausible. That would mean a $500,000 home falls to $300,000 and a $1 million home falls to $600,000. Why do they always say 40%? Right? It's really fucking interesting as to why they're saying 40%. Constantly, every single person in the last decade say 40%. Anyway, I just realise this after reading these bullshit articles. Uh, they chose that figure because... Such large falls have happened over other countries during the global financial crisis, and they assume rising unemployment falls and share market crash. Then they run a few scenarios that would like to see happen, blah, blah. One spend spending is another person's income. So there we have it. House prices in 2020 are going to crash by 40%, folks. Do not buy a home in 2020. Whatever you do, you will go broke, you'll be left financial destitute, and you will be a lost generation by the sound of things. Oh, anyway, November 2020. <laughs> November 2020. Uh, from news.com again. Australian housing market could see a historic crash. It is a worrying sign that the housing market, with one state seeing prices fall more than double the rate of 2008 housing crash. Uh, in 2015, award-winning form, The Big Short, Steve Carell. Let's just take a leap out of The Big Short and understand that there's dog shit wrapped in cat shit, and that is the whole financial system that we have. Anyway, so that's another article from November 2020. And then... 
we have here an article that I don't I don't know about this article. I haven't even seen this one yet, but I saw uh, that I had it put in my notes, so I'm going to have a look through it. What history tells us about falling house prices in five charts. Last month, Sydney recorded its largest fall in house prices since 1989 at 1.6% drop. And it's got a link there to the AFR article because they don't want to make the call themselves because they have to refer to someone else's article that was referred from someone else. Prices have been falling since they peaked in April. As many economists expect that by the time the housing market hits its lowest point, prices are falling by at least 15%. If that happens, it would make the largest downturn in record in history. Actually, come on a second. If it falls by 15%, it would make it the largest downturn on record in Australia? I thought all these other articles at 40% were anyway. Where'd they pull their 40% from? That's the, the fun part. What does it mean you buy and sell? Um, anyway, let's have a look here. Checking out these articles, text coming through. Uh, the current property market is particularly sensitive to interest rate changes. Uh, what is this? Monthly change in dwelling values. Oh, yeah, so here we go. The prices in uh, 2008 fell. What happened then? Interest rates went down, prices went up. In 2010, they feared that would have inflation, so they increased interest rates. Price went down, they stopped it. So there was a shade. That two year cycle finished, and then we started seeing that interest rates started falling, and that's when we started seeing house prices fall. Then we see in 2016, they tightened the noose when it came to APRA, and then we saw the property prices fall from 2016 to 2019. So, um, what do we got here? We've got change in dwelling values. We've seen everything crash in 2004. Imagine being caught up in the crash of 2004 and picking up a house in Sydney for 150 grand, eh? Wouldn't have, wouldn't be able to know yourself from that, eh? <laughs> um, what do we got here? So here we go. Um, areas when the markets were crashing, right? So this one here is a bit hard. So if you're from Sydney, just keep an eye out here. And this is what I've been saying actually for ages, right? So we've got here, I'm reading it from behind, eastern suburbs. This is in uh, 2022, right? Housing peaked in the eastern suburbs in 2021. Northern beaches peaked out. Inner west peaked out. Riders crashing. City inner south crashing. Borkham Hills and Hawkesbury still going up. Sutherland crashing. Inner west. Parramatta down. Then you've got all these guys here. Look at these. These are the rats and mice, right? Look at the bottom of the market. Rats and mice. People laugh. Southwest, Blacktown, Penrith, outer suburbs, Blue Mountain, Central Coast, right? All the shitty areas. Look at them. They're just the continuous little rises, right? They're not the ones going up and down, right? So where are you buying, right? I'm not buying in these sort of markets because that's where, you know, they're cool too, but where you see the crashes, it's not one linear market. There's markets within markets, so. Anyway, guys, anyway. I've got a chart here to share with you. And this is the chart. This is the 30-day ASX Inter cash rate futures implied yield curve there you go a bit of a tongue twist eh? this is a chart i've been sharing with you guys for a while i've been giving you quotes off it for the last 12 years or so um, anyway shows us where we are interest rate rise now at this blue line it's across with a bar graph uh, then we have a look here if we go to august 22 it would indicate that you've got about a 40 basis point increase so there's probably a chance of that occurring then it goes up and up and up but what is most important who knows what's important about this chart right now um i'll try and draw it here i'll follow along with the pencil right so you can all see my pencil here right it's going up 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 and then in about march 23 which is this one here right march 23 it peaks out right, at 3.66.5 and it sits there for a little bit. Now we're seeing tapering of 
monetary policy here. This will come back very quickly to here. I said at the start, this is a six months, we're going to see a massive crash, right? Massive recession. This is going to spill out more and far greater than, you know, property markets, right? There's businesses going broke, left, right, and center every single day. If you think, and you're fearful, most people are just looking here and go, oh, interest rates are going up, right? Well, you know, they go up for a little bit, your rents are going up, things are going up, whatever. But when they get to this point, but this point here will probably tap out somewhere around the later part of this year, I reckon somewhere between October and November. And I'm no economist, I'm no financial expert like these guys that are in the news. So please don't take anything I take to say too serious because who am I? I'm just some idiot with a rat's tail talking some whacked up stuff on the internet, right? Um, at this point, uh, that'll move back to this level. If they don't adjust monetary policy, which we're starting to see some tapering there, which is a very interesting sign that people should be um, sort of, I'll just draw it here. People should be focusing on what's occurring in that part of the um, chart that should fall backwards over here and we start seeing the decline. But I think that'll be sharp, guys. So anyway, as I said, who am I? Just some idiot on the internet with lots of properties, unlike these experts that don't have anything. So anyway, um, that is lots of articles for today. We can see that over the course of the last 20 years, there has been um, in the market uh, lots of negativity, right? The same news articles, the same sort of actors, they put out this little show pony to play tricks and say, oh, this is the expert of the day or whatever. Um, they'll say some calls and then they disappear um, because it never happens, right? But the news articles of today, and even as we're going through the boom that we just saw, we're still seeing negative articles, right? A lot of people are focusing on, you know, a lot of things out there, which you should be. You should be diligent with what you're doing, but just be, you know, practical with your thoughts. So make educated decisions. Uh, questions from you guys. I'll answer a couple of questions before we go. Uh, a lot of people here saying that we are, um, uh, that they can't read and things are dropping out. Um, uh, yeah, maybe it's that solar storm that they're all talking about. Uh, Matt said here, hey, Birchie, remember you bought all those houses in Western Sydney when there was a fear in the market? So I love seeing these articles as the start of the buying season for the next cycle. Exactly. So if we go back in 2003, 2005, 2008, I was buying houses in, um, in, um, in the next comment here. Um, I was buying houses in Western Sydney for 100 grand, 150 grand, 200 grand. And they were saying the sky's going to fall and the house price is going to crash. I realized at the time, how's a house at 150 grand going to crash, right? It could fall, but you know what about the ones that are a million bucks or two million bucks? So um, I was buying with a strategy. That's a strategy that I still use today. I was actually interviewed by some articles coming out from me in news.com over the next few days. So some of you guys in the community that have done cool things with dozens of properties in a year or two and cleaned up against sort of the normal advice that comes through. Um, but yeah, that, those deals that if I didn't do them back then, I'd, I'd be, um, you know, wouldn't be in the position I'm at today. So make sure that you have a strategy uh, in place to get you to where you want to be. Julie said here, news, no one ever watched that shit. <laughs> um uh, Mark said, when do the smashed Avo stories come back? Well, it's not about spending your money on smashed Avo. It's about your parents buying a house and working their whole life. And they're the greedy ones. And it's about, um, you know, the poor Corona and the poor, um, you know, illness that's been out there that caused uh, this to happen. And it's because of builders, the dodgy builders out there. And it's because of... Um, all these different things, right? But it's never, I've never seen any of these articles. Like if I was in charge of the news outlet, right? And this is why I don't get allowed on the news too much because otherwise I'll be saying shit that they don't like. I'd be saying a headline like fucking the RBA has robbed you. Your governments have been their bitch to enact the crime. And that's why you've lost your purchasing power across all of your things, right? That would be my news headline, but you never see it. It's always about, you know, um, some other third party invisible uh, enemy 
um, terrorists and, you know, all different things that have occurred over the years. Uh, how will inf hyperinflation impact a tenant's ability to pay back the higher rents? Um, I, um, I believe that it could be an issue in the future if everyone's paying, if people can't afford to eat, they have to cut back on something. Um, and yeah, not paying bills is, is one of those things. So, uh, but I do believe as we go through a hyperinflation that your currency, you will see that your currency is getting completely wiped out. We are not in a hyperinflation at the moment. We're in a very high level inflation. But the cure to what they are causing today will cause the hyperinflation, right? And they're trying to stop the hyperinflation from occurring with all their monetary policies. Um, however, it's going to be the cause of the hyperinflation. So when they have to go and put stimulus packages in to go back to this, uh, to fix up the mess that they're causing, that's what we're going to... Um, that's what we're going to uh, see the hyperinflation caused by. So if you revert back to a video that I recorded in about March 2020, so it's about two, two and a half years, I said within three years, not before three years and not after three years, at about three years, we will see the hyperinflation start. And I would be pretty fucking bang on with my prediction of that uh, based on mathematical equations, right? Um you know, I might come across swearing, I might come across as an imbecile, I may come across as mocking, uh, you know, very skilled and talented people that have never called uh, a property cycle for what it is. Um, you know, so I, I do take humour in that, I take laughter in that, and I like to have fun with it because I don't really give a shit about people's, um, you know, uh, you know, pronouns of how they like to have their care for their, um, you know, how they care about things, right? I just say it as it is, and it's factual, and I have fun with that. So, um, uh, Koshi has black band, you know. Koshi is a knob, and, uh, you know, I've been on Channel 7 many a times, and the interesting thing, and the reason why I um, didn't own Koshi uh, with some funny comments like this is because of etiquette and uh, care for other people that Pushy's teleprompter, which are my clients that have helped out over the years. So lots of uh, his friends have, um, you know, or his colleagues have been, you know, clients of mine over the years. So I wouldn't want to, you know, wreck that or be silly to them. So as always, if you're in someone's house, you show them respect, eh? But, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think that sometimes these guys can, um, you know, they fall on their own sword anyway. So, um, got one here, stunned, plugged, plunge, pain, bloodbath, emotive words. Do you think the commentators want to sell subscriptions or keep their jobs or both? Unnecessary panic. Uh, it's all clickbait. It's all clickbait. And these are conversations that I've had with the media executives over the years. Um, they need interesting selling stories. People don't want to hear about, you know, the boring stuff about whatever. It's not an encyclopedia. It's not a knowledge. It's not a Bible. It's not anything like that. It is Kim Kardashian uh, blew some other guy on the weekend. Whatever the case is, that's what sells articles and that's the sort of, you know, funny news articles that they want to have. So I like to have descriptive words in my articles too. Um, uh, Janice, g'day Birch, you've been following you since 2014. Still remember watching you with the interview with Koshi. He tried to dismantle your investment. Um, strategy there on live television it's laughable re-watching those interviews now considering everything you said was 100 percent spot on your compasses reputation speak for itself have they channel seven um invited you back to talk about the real estate market or is koshi just sticking to giving pensioners poor investment advice well look that's actually a very funny uh comment you make janice and thanks a lot for following me for over the years even when i say very weird and out there sort of sort of things um what i think is what do you got to remember that this is very true with, and this might trigger people, but it's true across all different things, right? A parliamentary person reads from a script, right? They're an actor, right? Uh, news readers have the things in their ears, they have the teleprompter, they read stuff. Koshi ain't learning shit, right? He's an actor and he's a position. He's a pawn there to sell a certain thing. And he probably does a good job for those that are, you know, controlling the network and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, he's there to do a job, right? He's a job on a certain thing. And it's funny because each of these news outlets around the world, you see similar sort of actors actually look very similar to each other as well. But um, you see these guys that are talking about certain things that they talk with authority, but they're learning, they're reading scripts and whatever. So my question, 
I'll put it as a challenge to Koshi, right? Because in circles of circles of people that know each other, that know each other, right? I know people that know Koshi, and it's funny hearing about how he conducts his day to day life, right? And I'm not going into that, but my question to um, him would be, what has he done with his life? He talks about he's successful, you know, whatever, but really, if we just sit down there and start pulling apart, you know, how many properties does he have? What is his net worth position look like? He's just you know, he gets paid to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning, at, at three o'clock in the morning, put on some makeup, um, chop a few hairs off, get his hair right, and sit in front of the, the camera and read out from a script. And he goes home and does whatever he does to his day. So does he know everything about what he's talking about? He's there questioning politicians. And you think about it, right? And when you really think about it, right, he's questioning people on certain things because he's trying to bait them and trigger them, do whatever he does. But what does he know about health? What does he know about war? What does he know about politics? Right? If he was to say something that the advertisers wouldn't like and the advertisers would pull their funding, well, then that would cause a bigger issue. So you really start questioning is who is putting their position of power and controlling what comes out of the puppet master's mouth, what the puppet master's putting out of the, the puppet's mouth. And they're the questions that you, know, you don't really see the answer to on TV. So that's why I have fun with what I do. <laughs> JB High Fire had a great day on the ASX. No one cares about spending exactly. Um, uh, old Sage is big businesses, all the big warehouses. Um, uh, what have we got here? As interest rates rise, uh, they seem to only focus on the housing market. Where does the biggest debt live? Residential housing, education, personal business, or government debt? What are the impacts? Good question, Adam. Um, I would think if I had to take a guess that residential housing may play a part, like they said $4 trillion or $5 trillion or $10 trillion, I reckon it'll play a part of the economy, but no one's talking about retail spending, no one's talking about corporate debt, no one's talking about bonds, no one's talking about other big businesses out there, no one's talking about the logistic companies that have debt for their fleet of trucks, no one's talking about Linfox, no one's talking about any of these um, sort of uh, aspects of the world that we live in. So I think it's very important that we look at it in a whole because just as much as um, you know interest rates have gone up, if you've got a 3% interest rate and it's gone to 4% or it's gone to 4.5%, fucking big whoop de do right? Push your rents up, you get some more cash flow. But the biggest part is imagine the businesses that had debt, which is based on the bank bill swap rate, which would be like one to one and a half percent before, which is now up to three percent or will go to four percent or whatever. Um, those businesses are the ones that will be most affected and then eventually will flow through and trickle down via people losing jobs and all those sorts of things. So, um, that would be my thoughts on that. Um, <laughs> Is that a big Ponzi chart? Yes. Um, great way to get the millennials into never buy and forever own nothing and be happy. Exactly. Um, it's a way of controlling even the whole thought, right? If you go back through Latin, right, and look up what the word mortgage means, it means death contract, right? A death contract, right? It's a contract to your death, right? Um, government, which is mind control, right? Um, these are English language is very interesting because of the words that we use and the you know things that we do. I'm not going to go into that because it is a little bit way out there, uh, especially when you say hello or good morning uh, or spelling. Uh, all these things are very interesting for the words that we use and what we use as affirmations to ourselves. So anyway. I digress. Uh, if you do want to get access, uh, I've just shared with you uh, 15, 20 years worth of uh, content there um, from the media. I actually used to do these weekly webinars uh, with a, a series called Raw, Raw and Uncut. Uh, when I, I didn't think about it too much beforehand. Uh, it's a mentoring program because I'm saying things raw and it's very live and uncut. And as someone said to me, it sounds like a porno one day, Nathan, because raw and uncut. You know? <laughs> Sorry, guys, but uh, it was what someone said in the comment section. But um, I actually talked about the crash that we're going to see. I talked about the global financial depression. I talked about lots of things. And uh, it was history really happening before it happened, right? And I think reflecting on a lot of things like we have tonight, it's important to go back and reflect on everything and okay, well, where is the opportunity that presents itself in front of me today? Because there is a lot of um, clues that are left behind, um, you know, from times gone by. 
So on that note, uh, for the month of July, there's only, I think, about 10, 11, 12 days left in this month. Um, the mentoring program was an $8,000 mentoring program. Um, it's been sold for $3,000 uh, for the course. Um, I have got the team to make it for $299 for the month of July. Um, yeah, there's probably about 100 hours worth of content there. Some of this stuff is evergreen. People wrote to me and said, Nathan, thanks a lot for um, you know, sharing me with one reno tip that saved me 10 grand or you know, the, the one little tip with my finance that got me an extra 100 grand or whatever it is. So um, there's lots and lots of content in there. Uh, a lot of information like things that have led up to where we are today in the market they're in. It's 299 bucks. Don't be a tight ass. If you're interested in it, click on the link in the in the sort of description box wherever you're watching this from and get access to uh, that mentoring program. Uh, one last thing as well before I go today, folks, uh, there is, it appears that there is some scammers out there that are trying to add you as friends and start up conversations. I don't have conversations. I never go into my own personal Facebook messaging. There's messages there from years and years ago. I apologize for never getting back to people, but I literally have way too many things that go on my day and I don't monitor those things. But one thing is, is that I would never um, start asking you for money and messaging you to say, hey, buy this or whatever. So be very, very cautious if someone tries to impersonate. They're happening on everybody's social medias out there. They're happening from all different walks of life. So I don't want your Bitcoin. I'm not trying to sell you Bitcoin. Don't worry about those addresses. It is probably a scam if you were talking to the person and we don't have a direct relationship. So if you do want to engage with us and get a help and build a plan, um, reach out to us, 1-300-367-925. Send us a message. Uh, give us an email at admin at beinvested.com.au. Um, and as I said, the best way of getting this information, you can keep watching these lives, keep, you know, I'll keep putting content out there, but there is a lot of really raw, genuine content from before where we are today, before my rat's tail, before my grey beard, uh, from about five years ago where I was talking about all the things that we've seen today uh, unfold. So, um, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, do check out that link. It's somewhere around on the description box of what we talked about tonight. Um, keep being diligent. Keep asking questions. If it doesn't make sense, don't do it. Um, numbers don't lie. Your emotions can lie. Your friends, your family, your media, whoever's around you can. Be educated. Make sure you make educated decisions. If you need help, we're here to help you. We'll catch up soon. Keep being awesome. Bye for now.